Hi, my name is Dimitris Karlabevis. I'm a mathematics teacher. And right now in front of us, we have a paper, a worksheet that contains 15 exercises on continuity of functions. And right now, together, we will solve the or we will see at least the solutions of the first three. So let's go really, really quick to the first one. A function f is defined as a piecewise function and it is equal to x squared minus one over x minus one when x is different than one and when x is equal to one it's equal to two the question here states is the function continuous at x equals one well for a function and specifically for f to be continuous at x equals one the condition that should be met is that the limit of f of x when x tends to 1 should be equal to the value of f at 1, should be equal to f of 1. We can already see that f of 1 is equal to 2, so all that is left from us is to calculate the limit of f of x and see if they are actually equal or not. The limit of f of x when x tends to 1 is equal to the limit of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, and we know that our first approach when it comes on working with limits should be simply substitute. If we do that here, if we substitute x by one, we would get zero over zero. And this practically means that we wouldn't be able to do much. The methodology here states that we need to somehow factorize numerator and denominator so that the factor x minus one appears on both. We can already see that factor in the denominator's place. But regarding the numerator, we can see that it's just an easy case of difference of squares. Indeed, x squared minus 1 can be written as x minus 1 times x plus 1. This means that if we actually write this, the x minus 1 brackets will be simplified and we will be left with the limit of x plus 1. Now we should substitute and we would get that this limit, which is actually the limit of the f of x, is equal to 2. This means that our initial condition is indeed met, which makes function f continuous at x equals 1. Let's move to exercise number 2. Once again, we have another piecewise function. This time, f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 over x cubed minus 1 when x is different than 1. And when x is equal to 1, it's equal to 1 half. Is f continuous at x equals 1? Once again, we have to prove this right or wrong through the definition. We can see that f of 1 is equal to 1 half. And now we need to consider the limit of f when x tends to 1. That should be equal to limit of x squared minus 1 over x cubed minus 1. And again, by di directly substituting 1 instead of x, we would get a 0 over 0, which means that once again, we need to somehow factorize the numerator and the denominator separately so that x minus 1 appears. In the numerator, x squared minus 1 is the difference of squares, so it can be written as x minus 1 times x plus 1. However, in the denominator's place, we have the difference of cubes. We should know that a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So, in this case, x cubed minus 1 would be equal to x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. x minus 1 brackets are simplified, and we are left with x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. Now, all that we need to do is substitute x by 1, and we would get 1 plus 1 over 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, which is equal in the end by 1 over 2. Notice now that indeed 
the definition of continuity at a point is satisfied. Indeed, at x equals 1, f of 1 is equal to the limit of f over there, which means that f is continuous at x equals 1. Let us now move to the third and final question of this video. Let f of x a piecewise function for which f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 when x is smaller or equal than 4, while when x is bigger than 4, f is equal to x minus 4 over square root of x minus 2. Is f continuous at x equals 4? In order, as always, for f to be continuous at x equals 4, we need the limit of f over there to be equal to the value of f at 4. Since, however, here, in our case, at x equals 4, f changes its formula, we have to consider side limits in order for the limit of f to actually exist at x equals 4. I'll begin with the side limit from the left, lim of f of x when x tends to 4 from the left. That would be equal to the limit of 2x minus 3, which by substitution leads to the value of 5. Then I am continue with the side limit from the right. Lim of f of x when x tends to 4 from the right should be equal to the limit of x minus 4 over square root of x minus 2. By substituting, we would still get 0 over 0, but here we have to apply an extra methodology, still we need to somehow bring up the x minus 4 factor, but in order to achieve that, since we have radical expressions, we should multiply by the radical expressions conjugate. In our case, the radical expression is square root of x minus 2. Its conjugate should be square root of x plus 2. So what I did was multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of x plus 2. That created the difference of squares in the denominator. That's why it actually happened. So we would get square root of x squared minus 2 squared, which is equal to x minus 4. I'm not doing anything in the numerator since I already have the x minus 4. What I'm doing next is simplify the x minus 4 brackets, which leads to the limit when x tends to 4 of square root of x plus 2, which leads in the end to the value of 4. Well, the side limits are not equal to each other. This means that since they are not even equal, there's no reason for us to consider the existence of the limit of f of x at x equals 4. There's no limit at that point. No limit at that point means that the definition of continuity cannot be satisfied, which in the end means that f is not continuous at x equals 4. And that would be all. Remember that you can watch the solutions of the next, of the rest 12 exercises of this handout and even more topics by simply becoming a member to my channel. As always, thank you for your time.